Hello everyone, you may have seen my first tutorial on the Amiga. I'm going to be going into a little redux here, showing you different ways of adding the games and why I added games the way I did to begin with in the first tutorial. Just watch what happens here. We're going to take another instance where the 7-zip method will actually help counteract the ability for the game to be removed from Hashi once you add it. So I'm going to go to File Add. And I'm going to go to my working folder from a few weeks ago. I am trying to add Castlevania vs. Arcade. And I'm going to add it. And obviously in order to run this with the Arcade Core, you have to have this exact file name when it's done, everything said and done. So watch what happens when I try adding this file. It adds it. And I cannot use it. It has a different file name. And I'll show you exactly why. Add more games. I'm going to go inside the file. Look, it has one singular file inside. This is why I use the 7-zip method. So watch what happens here. I'm going to try to 7-zip this. And try to add it. And then watch what happens then. It has the appropriate file name. So I've been able to retain that. But I also use the archi archive mode, which I did in the previous video for another reason. I'll show you this. Say, for instance, you want to have the same game, but run it with two different arcade cores. Say I want to run uh, Journey on MAME 2000 and MAME 2010. I'll try adding a file. And then I want to have uh, MAME 2010 with it. This is one that works on both main 2010 and 2000. Now I want to add the same game again and run it on main 2000. Watch what happens. I'm going to go up to the top here. I'm going to add the same game again. It absolutely wiped the previous game. So using my little trick that I showed you in the Amiga video, I'm going to simply do uh, a little template here. We'll do a uh, journey 2000 and journey 2010. And I'm just going to make a copy of that into both folders. And I'm going to get back to uh, another way that you could do this with uh, Amiga as well to better clarify things. But now I have these two different templates here. And I'm just going to create a little text file. Of course, I'm going to have to do games and apps show all so I can see everything. And I'm just going to rename that to a Journey 2000. Then I'm going to open this up. And drag that right into it. And I could actually just leave that text file in there. It's absolutely harmless. It will not affect the game because the main core is simply looking for the ROM sets inside. But I'm going to leave that the way it is. I'm going to do the exact same thing for 2010. Journey 2010. Now I'm going to open this up. And there are many, many instances where this is handy. That's why I showed you that. And I call this the Mr. Miyagi School of Training, where you're going to have a situation arise where the wax on, wax off train of thought is going to really come in handy. Now I'm going to try to add these games again. I'll add a uh, journey for 2010 MAME right now. Add it to archive. It added as an additional file. Beautiful. So I could just uh, change that to MAME 2010. Then I could add the same uh, 2001. And it adds as yet another file. So that is exactly why I showed the Amiga method because it comes in huge, huge handy for that purpose. Well, it'd help if I made it 2000 because I already did the 2010 one. But uh, basically, the other thing this comes in handy for is uh, I'll show you briefly in the core set. 
Then we're going to do the Amiga portion. If you go into the PSP section, you have uh, Nintendo DS and OpenBoar. And when you add this Nintendo DS as a template, you're going to have the issue where it's going to basically wipe itself out from the main user interface over and over again because this eboot PBP file has the same byte out, you know, it's the same bytes no matter what you do. But if you added this as a 7-zip, same way, and then you added a text file, say I'm running, um, obviously DS does not run well, so this is just an example. Say I'm just running, uh, Mario Kart. And then I just do the same thing. I would just add that as a game into Hashi. And I did do tutorials on the open board and the DS. I mean, you could look back and see when I did those. I'm going to add that right there. Import as archive. And then I'm going to go into the archive. Delete the text file. Because when I uncompress it, whatever file is left is what it's going to retain. And for eBoots and any CD-based systems, you always have to have them uncompressed. They cannot have 7 zip when you add them. So if you're adding a PlayStation 1, Sega CD, and so on, you could do one or two things. You could do uh, compress... Games when added and have it completely disabled, or if you happen to have it enabled, you could uh, just simply right click on it afterwards and decompress it. And then you just have to change your command line. And I uh, took the wrong file out of there, as you see. So let's uh, add the right file again. That's my little goof for today there. Try this one more time. I'll show you why I messed up right there because I took it from the source directory rather than the hashy directory. Again, I never edit my videos because when I make a little goof, you can see me doing the troubleshooting portion on the fly. So I'm going to my hashy directory where the true file uploaded now I'm gonna go into this eboot file which is the one that I should have amended not the one that I added as my source file take out the Mario Kart text and then I'm going to right click and decompress it and then I'll have the proper eboot file there you go and then I would just use the PPSSPP because that DS runs with the PSP core now we're gonna to get to the Amiga portion here just so you understand the clarification there I'm going to go to File Add, but I'm going to basically go to that directory where I had my uh, template for it, Amiga. I have my template there. Let me extract this real quick. Now I have my, uh, I'm running, say I'm just going to run from the normal user interface. I'm going to take the original chipset one right here, and I'm going to copy it to the game folder. That I would like to add. My working folder from earlier in the previous video. I'm going to this HDF folder. I'm going to create that template right there. I'm just going to delete the previous template that I have. Right here I'll delete the Alien Breed one. And I'll rename this to Alien Breed. Now remember, I said if you try adding the same file over and over again, it'll come up with the same exact CLV folder name. So I have the ZDNLD, and if I try uh, doing it again, and I try renaming this, Alien Breeds for instance, and I try adding it, it'll still maintain the same thing. So the other way you could do this, if you do not want to do the 7-zip method, you could just name it to exactly what you want the file name to be. 
And then you could open this with Notepad before adding it. And make sure you change the game name here. Obviously, you can't change the CLV folder name here yet, but you can change the game name here to Alien Breed. And what this does is it changes the byte offset so that it is an entirely a different file inside. Obviously, you cannot do this if you're dealing with eBoots. You're not going to want to go inside an eBoot and try to edit the eBoot because then you're going to end up breaking the game. And you need very, very specialized software to even do that. That's why that little workaround with the text file comes in handy. So I save this little byte offset here. And then I'm going to add the same exact file. And watch that ZD, see it changed. So again, you can watch my previous video. You can do it the 7-zip method, or you can do it this way and just amend at least the name portion. And again, I'm going to do that again. I amend the name portion. Now what I have to do is uh, go to that directory, to finalize that. And again, you guys and gals could ask me any questions. I have no problem answering your questions on any of this stuff. And I'm going to be trying to do performance upgrades on some of the AGA games because they do not run as well as the typical HDF games. You know, the, the typical ones that you'd be running. But I'm going to open up this Alien Breed again. And I'm going to look at exactly what the CLV folder name is. And I always like going into my hashy games SNES directory and looking at the sort by date modified. I'm going into that exact directory where I added it. And I have this file right here. I already changed the alien breed name, but I have to add the CLV folder for use with the user interface. So that would be CLV. Hyphen Z hyphen D F S J P and I would save that again the first tutorial shows the entire bio setup and all that stuff and it shows the workaround method for adding the games and making the games and all that good stuff but uh, I'm showing you this alternative way of doing it I don't do it this way personally I prefer doing the 7 zip method because there are just so many instances a good dozen instances where it comes in handy each and every time I do it that is just a force of habit for me at this point. But definitely verify you have the correct letter in there because otherwise it is not going to boot. And then of course after you do that file, you're going to have to copy the HDF file in there to that same directory. And then of course close Hashi. Always close Hashi after making any adjustments. And then reopen it and then you could sync this entire game from within the context of Hashi and had no issues. And if I would like to run this in the dummy folder, all I have to do is just copy this directly to the flash drive. I'm going right to a dummy folder and I created an Amiga folder and I'm just going to copy it right here. I'll, I'll move this to my backup folder. I'm just going to copy this entire folder here. And I'm going to take the Alien Breed HDF out of there. Copy it right to this directory. And I'm going to go into my course set again and grab the template for the dummy folder. And I'm going to do additional templates for other scenarios such as NAND dummy folder and such. But this is going to at least get you guys and gals off the ground and be able to run this amazing, amazing core. And I've always wanted an Amiga. I'm so glad to be able to finally play this. So I'm grabbing a template here. It would help if I go to the proper folder here. It again is in the Extras Amiga folder. Template. And it is going to be the original chipset dummy USB. So I'm going to grab that. Copy it into the same directory here. And I'm going to rename it to Alien Breed. And as long as you have this format, Hashi Games... Dummy, Amiga, and the caps do matter. It's very, very case sensitive. Make sure it is a capital Amiga and have the dummy folder the exact way I have it. And you'll have no issues. I'm going to right click using Notepad++. And again, if you go into my core set, into the tools folder, 
you're going to have the Notepad++ right here, which you can easily install, and it helps out with many, many things. All I have to do is change the game name here, because everything else is preset. I have the BIOS already configured, as long as you install them using the Master BIOS module. So, Alien Breed HDF. Now I have that both set to go.